example, because we talked next about reducing the cost of failure. And I'm gonna actually show you what I'm talking about. So uh, my next big thing is about being able to learn fast. It's all about shots on goal, right? So like, for example, Storytel, we raised $3 million. We've got runway through like late 2024. So let's call that, let's just call it 18 months for shifting the group. Maybe it's not quite that. We'll just say 18 months. 18 months isn't really 18 months. It's more like 12 months. Because you're like, when you're six months out from running out of cash, you're not going to be like, these are great. Right? So you really have 12 months. And when I think about the cost of failure, I think about this. So this is actually from the DevOps world, but I've modified it for product development. It's, it's the increasing cost of defense. And let me just walk you through this. So let's say that you are building a product. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to try to understand your users and you want to put features into some place like product board or maybe it's notion or something like that. But you're putting your you know, proposed features somewhere. And then you start to really whiteboard them out. Like what's this going to look like? How's it going to work? And you're doing whiteboards and you're starting to do like rapid prototyping, but it's on a whiteboard. And then you put them into Figma. You start to actually design them and mock them up and do like wireframe, UX, UI, et cetera. And then you build it and you ship it. And then you get feedback, and this says we see NSM dip. And NSM is our North Star metric. If we wait until, and by the way, it takes a month to do this, let's just say. By the time you see your North Star metric start to go down, the cost of that failure is like 100 times if you had just understood here to the left that you were building the wrong thing. Or maybe when you're in the whiteboard phase, or maybe when you're in the Sigma phase, but definitely before you're actually building it. So I like to talk about shipping continuously, but I don't mean code. I mean shipping ideas continuously because the more that you can move left and understand your users sooner, the lower your cost of failure, the more shots on goal you have. So back to the runway example, if this takes a month and I've really got 12 months of runway, that's 12 learning cycles. That's not that much. 12 opportunities to learn and improve. If we can move this left and we can be shipping ideas, maybe I get 100 learning cycles. Or maybe if I can get a DevOps pipeline in, I can you know, ship 15 times a day, then maybe I get a couple hundred or a couple thousand learning cycles throughout the whole thing. And so reducing the cost of failure by, by understanding users is a really, really important thing. And so at Storytel, what we're doing is we're using Product Board, which Product Board, if you use like Jira or Linear, it's like that kind of a thing for product development. You could also just use it. You don't need to use Product Board. We use Product Board and we have a funnel where we go from new idea all the way down to delivered complete. These are all different stages. And so when we create features, we put them in the new idea stage. You can see there's 300 in here right now, 309 right now. RP means rapid prototyping. So this first stage is prioritized for the future, prioritized next, prioritized now, rapid prototyping, creating UX assets, implementation, delegated to core eng, eng, prioritizing, increment, sprint, released, needs user feedback. So this is the loop that we use to try to learn faster because we want to do as much as we can, as much learning as we can up here versus down here where it's more expensive. So how do we do that? I will show you. Here is a blog post. It's a forum post where our rapid prototyping engineer is asking for feedback. So let's just play it for a second. Hello, we're in the rapid prototyping session. We got everybody in the room and I want to do another demo of actually the working uh, updates to the landing page. So we've, yeah, we've shown the mocks of what this is going to look like before, but now we've actually got it in the browser working. So this is us in a rapid prototyping session. This is like two days ago. And Ryan has Figma mocks and he is walking us through them. But instead of just walking us through them, our customer experience team, which is my co-founder, one person, her name is Erica, is taking a video of what he's doing. I actually have the behind the scenes of this. So let me show this to you. So this is what's actually happening in the room. I made this video just for all of you. I put it up on YouTube today. So it's- well, it makes sense though. So you've got four options down here, PDF, YouTube, web, and text. For the PDF, this is like a- So this is us in our small little office, we're crowded too many people into. We have the TV up, Ryan's 
five will upload UI, computer. and you can also drag one from off the screen and pull it in and just drop it right here and we'll start processing. YouTube, you can just drop the link right here. And there we are, right? This is Ryan. This is like product development in action. But we just happen to be capturing it. We're using something called Zeit, which used to be called Cloud App or like Loom. Just literally doing a screencast of, of the screen. And then we post it out into a forum. And in this forum, people can respond back. And this is Pierre, who happens to work at Adobe, who responded back because we put this out into the world. And this was 11, 13 hours ago. And so by not just building for ourselves, but by building in a very public way, or as we're doing it, we're just capturing and putting stuff in. And by the way, stuff's all free. It's YouTube. This is a Wix forum. Maybe it costs like $10 a month or something. This doesn't cost a lot of money. It's just an approach where we can start to get feedback way earlier. And this happens to be positive feedback, but there's been plenty where he's been very constructive. And so then we can learn faster. We're not actually shipping code. We're just shipping ideas. So this is an example of the qualitative part. You were asking for an example. This is an example of the qualitative part. I'll stop here for a second. Yeah, Mohammed. This applies to anything that you are doing where you want to get data from someone who's not you. <laughs> so absolutely, yes, it does. And by the way, we also happen to have, I'll show you, I'll like, I'll show you a little, I'll, I'll pull back the curtain a bit more on what's happening inside the, the company. So we happen to have, let me, I got to find this here. So give me a second. Got to remember what it's called. This one. We have this workflow that we use. So I'm gonna pull up two more things to show you. I'm also tethering from my phone, so it's not the fastest. But basically, we created a triage team. That triage team is made up of contractors in the Philippines that do on-demand jobs. So the triage team, I wrote a post about that as well, triage. So if how our triage team enables, so I'll put this on Twitter. Storytells, Storytells triage team process, SVB taco Tuesdays. Here we go. All right, now that's out, out in the world. So we have a triage team that allows us to make an ask. That ask can be made uh, on my phone, I can record some audio, and it goes to a, uh, a in Notion Kanban board. Um, so basically, I record the audio, and then it shows up in a Kanban board. And so we can make triage that for this team, and they just like when they get it, they just do the thing that we ask them, right? So it's incredible. Like I wish I had done this like three startups ago. And this triage team runs a process where we have a Kanban board for uh, needs AI treatment, needs human editing published on social, pending Hacker News, published to social. So every single piece of content that we have goes out in this process. It gets published to YouTube, it gets published to TikTok, it gets published to Hacker News, to LinkedIn, to Facebook. It gets published everywhere by this triage team. So all we do is we just do the rapid prototyping that we're doing anyway in the room with four people, which most companies are just doing in private. We're just taking a video of it and making a triage ask and then boom, it goes out into the world and Pierre, Adobe response. That's the kind of thing that this enables. 